Are you looking for ideas and inspiration to make the most of your home and garden? Or would you like to win a room's worth of free flooring? Then you've come to the right place. Welcome to the very first episode of Roost. We'll be here every week with expert advice to make the most of the space you have. To get started, we're going to work from the ground up. So here's our guide to the best flooring ideas for any style of kitchen. These days, our kitchens are at the heart of the home and are an important space for cooking, socialising, working and entertaining. It goes without saying that your kitchen flooring needs to look great, but it also needs to be durable, hard wearing and easy to clean. There are lots of flooring options out there from traditional floorboards to polished concrete, but here are the three materials we'd recommend, all of which are compatible with underfloor heating systems. Firstly, Luxury Vinyl Flooring, known as LVT for short, is a brilliant choice for a kitchen and feels warmer underfoot than other tiles. It comes in lots of finishes from wood effect to stone and can be laid in all manner of different patterns, including on-trend herringbone. LVT is really easy to clean, maintain and keep looking as good as new. A quick sweep and a regular light mop are all that's needed. Spillages are easy to wipe up and LVT's hard wearing surface is also waterproof and stain resistant, making it the perfect floor to sit beneath a dining table. LVT flooring, like this from Amtico, comes in individual planks that need to be fitted by an accredited installer to get the perfect finish. Expect to pay upwards of £35 per metre squared for LVT flooring, with installation costs on top, which will vary depending on the pattern you choose. Our second pick of the most practical kitchen flooring materials is man-made tiles, which are durable and come in lots of different finishes and patterns. Porcelain is a popular hard-wearing choice for kitchens and is really affordable, with prices starting from around £20 per metre squared for the tiles. Made from a fully vitrified clay, porcelain products shouldn't need sealing and are easy to clean with a steam cleaner or mop. Ceramic tiles are even more affordable, starting at around £10 per metre squared. However, they're more lightweight and more easily damaged than porcelain, so you'll need to make sure the tiles you choose are suitable for flooring. Human-made tiles can be installed by a competent DIYer, but it's best to get a tiler in if you're not sure your skills are up to the task. Our third option for your kitchen flooring is natural stone tiles, which are durable and have beautiful natural variations. The key consideration when choosing natural stone floors is how porous the tiles are and how much sealant you'll need to apply. Quarry tiles are practically indestructible and are so hard that they're unlikely to need much by the way of sealing. Terracotta, by comparison, will soak up vast quantities of sealant before reaching its saturation point, adding a significant amount of time and cost to the process. You'll need to repeat the sealing process regularly. Cost-wise, sandstone is the most affordable option at around £25 per metre squared, followed by travertine, slate, limestone and marble, ending up with granite. Again, these can be installed by a competent DIYer, but bear in mind that the tiles can be particularly difficult to cut. So there you have it, three great options for beautiful and practical kitchen flooring. Now, do you ever struggle to know which colours to use to complement your paint and wallpaper? In the first of our new series, here's interiors expert Sarah Spiteri with her guide to the colours that go best with blue. As every decorator knows, blue is one of the most easy to use colours in the palette. There are so many tones to choose from, from pale sky blue to deep dark denim to the rich and vibrant Eve Klein blue. Today, I'm going to suggest five colour combinations. The principles of colour theory still very much apply when decorating with blue, but do also remember that really there are no hard and fast rules in colour, so the best advice is to go with what you feel comfortable with and the colours you are drawn to. If you're a through and through fan of the colour, mix multiple shades of blue into a monochromatic scheme. This is sure to have a calming, stabilising effect on a room. 
To make sure the combination sits well together, look for blues with similar undertones, such as blue-green, turquoise, and dark teal. Repeat the hues across walls, curtains, rugs, and accessories to create a rich, layered look. Then introduce a variety of fabric textures and patterns of different scales to bring depth. In a kitchen, you could pair powder blue in a deep, dark, smoky blue. Use the darker color to ground the base units with a paler color on the walls. One trick in a small or dark room is to paint the walls, woodwork, and ceiling in a single shade of complex, rich blue. It is a common misconception that dark colors shrink a room. Indeed, the successful decoration of a small room revolves around tricking the eye into making it appear larger. My second pairing is blue and white. This is a trusted combination that managed to be both fresh and sophisticated all at once. It's a classic, age-old pairing. Just think of Greek architecture or traditional Chinese pottery. And the success makes sense from a color psychology perspective as well. When blue, calm and soothing, and white, clean and simple are put together, you get the ultimate serene and tranquil space. That said, if you do want something more standout, the simplicity of the palette does allow you to be more confident with pattern. Next up, blue and green. The old adage, blue and green should never be seen, simply doesn't ring true. Sitting next to each other on the wheel, blue and green are cool colors that look great together and always form a refreshing combination. Choose vibrant shades of these, what we call analogous colors, on walls and furniture for a bold scheme. Farrow and Ball's stone blue looks amazing with its arsenic, for instance. The emotional effect of decorating with blue and green is always positive. Green is the color of balance, calm, and compassion, while blue is peaceful, orderly, and soothing. A good accent color with blue and green is pink, either a flash of soft blush or hot neon. My fourth pairing is blue and orange. These are complementary colors, which essentially means that they sit opposite each other on the wheel. Although pleasing to the eye, these create a high contrast, so use them when you want something stand out. Ideally, use one color as the lead to create a backdrop, and then introduce the other as accents. Remember, you can also use tints and shades here, a lighter tint of blue contrasted against a darker orange, for example. A color combination that works well in a dining room might be dark, inky blue on the walls with pops of vibrant orange. Then add depth and relax that contrast by bringing in fabrics in a shade of sea green. For something a little less garish, yellow also works well as an accent with blue. For example, a bedroom decorated in different shades of blue will be given a lift with a mustard throw on the bed. Finally, blue and red. Red, as an energetic color, can be a very effective foil to restful blue. There are two ways to play this color scheme. First, sky blue and red. This is a combination often found in vintage textiles that seems particularly popular right now. A favorite sky blue for mixing with red is Edward Bulmer's aerial tint. You can also opt for a more poppy scheme by mixing deep navy with a pillar box red. Although vibrant, this is still a fairly timeless combination. We tend to suggest that red is an accent color on furniture or fabrics with navy as your lead color. So there we have it, tons of options when you decorate with blue, whether you're going for a sophisticated, bold or calming look. Join us next week for more of Sarah's advice on colour pairings for your home. The weather is finally starting to brighten up, which means we're all taking tentative steps out into our gardens. Over the next four weeks, we'll be showing you how to create the perfect spot for outdoor entertaining, starting with how to get the design right. If there's one part of our home that's seen more use than ever recently, it's our gardens. We've all come to realise that no matter how big or small they are, they can be invaluable as an extra living space, giving us somewhere to escape the four walls of our home. So if you're keen to make even more use of your outdoor space and want to get it looking its best for spring and summer, we've got all the advice you'll need. Choosing the right location for your outdoor living space is your top priority before you even begin to think about how it will look and what furniture you want. It's best not to set up your main seating area too far from the house as you won't appreciate having to trek to the far end of the garden every time you want to relax outdoors or when you want to pop back into the house to grab a drink or something to eat. If you're undertaking a full-blown patio makeover, consider matching the floor tiles with those in your house for an indoor-outdoor link. This is especially key if you've finished a kitchen extension or renovation project that's involved opening the house up to the garden. 
Matching the flooring either side of the glazing will extend your living space further and enhances the flow between outside and in. It's a good idea to really study the movement of the sun in your garden so you can work out what time of day the sun will be on your outdoor living space when you want to use it most. For example, your favoured seating area might enjoy the sun at midday but will it be in shadow and therefore feel chilly by 4pm when you want to sit outside for late afternoon drinks? And how sheltered is your planned space too? Does it feel quite exposed sometimes, for example when it's particularly windy? A summer house, hedge or even a simple garden fence, such as in this modern setup, can be a useful way of providing a windbreak, creating a more sheltered spot for your seating area. And as much as we love the sun, spending all day basking in its rays can be harmful. So build in some protection in the form of a shade sail, canopy, parasol, as shown here. As well as providing a cool corner in the summer heat, it's also perfect for those days where you want to work on your laptop outside without having to squint at the screen all day. Plus, they can be just as effective for adding some garden privacy, shielding you from any prying neighbours. We've talked about shade, but have you thought about patio heating too? As the temperatures drop in the evening, you can extend the life of your patio area with a fire pit. Think of it like the modern version of telling stories around a campfire. It's the same cosy experience, but with a very stylish upgrade. When it comes to choosing the right furniture for your outdoor space, style and comfort are just as important as practicality. Yes, of course you want to make sure that your furniture will withstand sun, rain and anything else that gets thrown at it, but it needs to be comfy to sit on too. So if a lack of space means choosing between laid-back seating or a table, go for the former and not for a big comfy sofa like this one. Guests can always eat barbecue food on their laps, but there's a limit to how long you can lounge around on upright dining chairs. Food and drinks can be served on a couple of small folding tables that can be put away once everything has been polished off. Modular furniture is a great choice for outdoor spaces, as you can add to it as required. Plus it's easy to move pieces around the patio to create space for a table or fire pit when necessary. Just like our indoor living spaces, your outdoor version is a chance to really show off your personality, adding colour and texture through accessories and finishing touches. One of the easiest ways to do this is to add a splash of pattern underfoot, as shown here. Rugs designed specifically for outdoor use are now widely available and come in bright colours and fabulous patterns that can cover up boring patio slabs that might be in need of a makeover. Throw in a few cushions, add some outdoor speakers, a bar trolley for drinks and you've got the perfect outdoor living space for all occasions. I hope you feel inspired now to create your dream outdoor living space this summer. Come back next week for tips on using planting to make a feature of your outdoor entertaining area. In each episode of Roos, we'll be bringing you an amazing giveaway. And our first one gives you the chance to win a room's worth of beautiful luxury vinyl flooring from Antico. We're giving one winner the chance to win 25 meters squared of flooring from its spacey range in any color or pattern of your choosing, worth around 1,000 pounds. To be in with a chance of winning, simply head to one of the websites listed on your screen and fill in the entry form. Entries close at midnight on March the 17th, so good luck! That's it for this week, but please join us next time for advice on patio planting, hallway flooring ideas and ways to brighten up your grey decor. Oh, and we've also got a £1,000 Yale security bundle to give away. Thanks so much for watching this episode of Roost, sponsored by Amtico. And remember to subscribe to the Future Homes Network YouTube channel for more videos like this.